Welcome oh, yeah. to the Emo Social Club podcast, broadcasting to you live from EmoSocialClub.tv. I am Brian. And I'm Lizzie, and we're here this evening on a special Sunday episode with Tree River. Thank you so much, guys, for being here tonight. Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Uh, tell us your names, what you do in the band, uh, whether you would smash or pass for Pokemon. Oh, um, <laughs> don't actually <laughs> answer that question. Guy, I will say. Monsters, you know? Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I guess just leave that part out of it then and just tell us who you are and what you do in the band. <laughs> I am Phil. I am uh, I, along with Trevor, who will introduce himself on his own accord in a second. We uh, we write the songs and I, I play the guitar. Yes. And my name is Trevor. I'm the singer and the other sort of primary songwriter with with Phil. I play guitar also. Um, and... Yeah, we're we're uh, we're we're the we're sort of the core here of Tree River, but we represent band with other. <laughs> They're here in absentia. Yeah. Yes. Oh they they've sent a proxy, and it's just feelings and emotions through music and song. Yes. I'll have to tune into uh, the Twitch stream to to catch on to that that part of the conversation that we were having yeah. before we started recording. <laughs> Just why everyone needs to get here ahead of time. So when we start to talk about, you know, your new LP that's coming out on the 1st hey. of April, you yes. know, they're not going to miss too much out on it. So can you tell us about Time Being that's coming out soon? Yeah. So Time Being is an album that we recorded in October of 2020, kind of in the like weird uh, end of the first act of COVID, I would say, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's like <laughs> first a end. lot later. <laughs> Uh, we've been sitting on it for a while, so it's very exciting to finally get this thing out into the world. We are very stoked for people to hear it. We're, I still really like the songs. I think they, they hold up. Uh, and we're excited to, like, you know, play music in a room together and go on a little tour. <laughs> and, you know, I'm excited to hear what everyone's favorite song is when people listen to it. It's, it's great. I feel like we've been just, like, you know, waiting for this moment for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. So we recorded it, like you said, and it was in October 2020. And when we finished it, um, our lovely manager and label, which we're stoked to talk about, shout out Big Scary Monsters, um, they were like, okay, we're going to be putting out this album in April 2022. And that just sounded like just, you know, a million <laughs> years in the future. And we were like, wait, is the world still going to exist? Like literally, at, you know? And and here we are. It's almost here. It's gotten so, so much closer to not existing. So it's just yeah, like, I mean, like, like you're not incorrect. Yeah. It also kind of seems I like know. the timing for the tour, we, knock on wood, but it seems like we maybe timed it really well. You got to get in there between variants these days. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got it before <laughs> Sigma, we're good to go. Yeah, America's very between variants right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it just, it works in our favor. We'll get another, you know, surge. Uh, listen, I hope not, but... <laughs> Just, just, it's coming. Just embrace it, live your life. We're all fine. You know, we're here. Just, you got to find stuff to look forward to and live your life. Yeah. Just tours and all that. So, so and it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> look, birds are real and so is yeah. every infectious disease. So it's interesting that you have had the music since 2020 and are still so hyped on it because I feel like there's a lot of artists that like, they just put shit out and they're like, whatever we had the song it, here. It is. It's out now. Uh, a lot of it was based on being quarantined and I'm like, Hey, blink 182, maybe you just don't. Uh, and then like <laughs> there are artists who are like, yeah, we wrote a record. We put it out like at the, at the start of the pandemic and then never got to tour on it, never did anything. And now they're putting out more new music. And it's yeah. like, it, it, I just don't know how it feels like if you have this, this creation or this thing. And it's like, even a year down the line, or in this case, a year and a half, maybe or so let's, let's round up there. Like, are you still feeling like emotionally connected to where you were in October of 2020? It might feel different if we, Oh, sorry, go for it. Well, I was just going to say that it's interesting how similar the world kind of <laughs> is in like the last year and a half and like in our personal experiences. And I mean, I, I think that the, the songs themselves have, like an emotional core that still feels very relatable um, to me, at least. 
And so we're hoping that other people can resonate with it also. I also think from a practical standpoint, if, you know, if we'd written like an entire EP or album's worth of music since then, maybe I would feel like this kind of feels a little stale, but to be completely transparent, we haven't written a single note of music. <laughs> <laughs> so it still feels like the, the latest and greatest representation of what the hell we're capable of. I sure. think we picked up we picked up some momentum recently and inspiration and yeah I wrote a riff last week that was fun. <laughs> there you go one riff in the bank for EP twenty twenty two it's hard yeah. though basically point seven percent of an entire album so yeah we'll keep it going <laughs> it's it's tough out there though right now like to be able to maintain creative projects and also like navigate a life in this crazy world is it's not easy so. Kudos to bands that can still do that, you know. Um, but we're like we're we're fighting for it. We're keeping things going, putting in the, the work. Right. We make a lot of social media posts because the label mm -hmm. says that we have to, and we're happy <laughs> to do it. But it's definitely a very different skill than uh, writing and playing music. It's like it's very weird that this is now just like thirty-seven percent of being a successful indie musician is like got to engage with people these imaginary people on social media that i don't really <laughs> these fake people by, like, these fake contest. people are birds look you know what? They just... son of a bitch all <laughs> the usernames are just words on a screen but i i will say that like through the pandemic and like being on twitch and being in front of like an audience that you don't know but you're just like seeing words flow by on a screen you're like Shit, these are my fucking friends now. Wow. Well, totally. then you meet them in person and you just know them by their username. Like, I they don't, don't, yeah, have I real do not names. know people's they real names. They don't have real names. But what's, what trips me out is that they're real people. Like, yeah. each, of the, <laughs> each of those individual human beings that, like, likes your post or whatever, follows you is like a fan. It's a person that you've gotten to connect with through social media. So it's, it's definitely like, you know, a, yeah, double-edged sword. Is mm -hmm. that the yeah. phrase? Two a double, two, two swords. Two what? swords. Anyway. Have two edges. One edge right? each. Two swords, yeah. four edges. We've got swords and we've got edges, and I. But yeah, we just you gotta do what you gotta do. It is wild, uh, honestly, because I think before we started this album, like there definitely was not a lot of people that I would sort of see interact with us on let's say twitter who i would say like oh those are our like fans but because there's sort of been this like slow rollout of like the singles and the signing announcement and the tour announcement like all these little pieces of momentum like there are people now that are like tweeting not even at us just like at other people who they interact with on like oh i can't wait for the tree of album like i made like we just made it like it's crazy <laughs> I'm excited for something that i'll just I, i've been honestly just reaching out to people on twitter being like here it is i'll just send it to you you don't have to be excited. i'll just i'll leak it myself <laughs> yeah just, i'll leak it to anyone who wants to hear it honestly just send me a message i don't it's fine <laughs> i'm excited big that scary monsters you didn't hear that <laughs> yeah it's digital music's free now baby what do you want it's fine you know yeah big scary monsters i thought of a. Uh... I, I thought of your guys' um, Instagram post I was scrolling through earlier, and for uh, your single thought bubbles, I saw one of you guys posted, like, my, we have to get on TikTok, someone, like, your cousin or niece said, my Gen Z niece or something has to tell us we have to get on here uh, and so post on Reels. My sister-in-law is much younger than me, so she's 20... Three. So every time I try to like post on the Instagram, like let's say we have a video or like a live acoustic, whatever thing, every time I try to post it on Instagram, I have to like spend 35 hours like looking up like <laughs> a reel versus IGTV versus now mm -hmm. they changed it to Instagram video. And then sometimes mm -hmm. you post it and it's only a minute, but you want it to appear on this kind of algorithm. So, but she just tells me exactly how to do it. And mm -hmm. that's exactly how I go about these things now. Love it. There's always an easier way to find out, and it's when someone tells you how to do it. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we should be on TikTok. I, I wish I knew like what kind, like what kind of content would I post on TikTok as a band? Like, is it just like? It's like, hey, this is our new song. You might like it if you're like for fans of. And you could just like oh, yeah. do that, or, or you do like that. the funny dances or the trends. That's the, I don't want to do the dances. You don't, don't have to dance. Do There's trends, so There's you can just do the regular trends. So like. You could, in theory, make a TikTok, like multiple TikTok videos and draft them. So you stockpile them. But you only Whoa. have like a week, week and a half until you're on to a new trend. So you have to like post it immediately. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. It's okay. a lot of copying. Just like yeah. somebody does something. So then you also do it. 
And then I feel like that goes against the ethos of our band. We it goes mean. against the ethos of every creative person. <laughs> it's like you it's can't just copy. Like that's too exhausting. First of all, exhausting. Second yeah. of all, it's not. I don't know. It doesn't really excite me that much. I like, think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rob a bank and then hire a marketing <laughs> think tank to. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. Again, big scary monsters. <laughs> if you th- you heard that, no, you're, you didn't. You're hearing, you're hearing nothing. <laughs> it's just keywords. It's code. We just it's fine. A think tank. <laughs> I'm barely not capable of doing it on my own. I don't even know what a think tank is. It's like a bunch of people just in a room thinking together. Yeah. Like, what the hell is a think tank? It's a bucket it's of brains. There is a Say Anything song where one of the lyrics is, what does a marketing think tank actually do on their last album? He gets, right. It's like he gets fired for it's a whole thing. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's all fire yeah. by Say Anything. Check it out. <laughs> it's like a minute and 40 seconds long. It's a great song. <laughs> Everyone's about to learn what think tanks are, but usually think tanks are more associated with like not great um me- like, like news media. Think tanks yeah, things. yeah, yeah. It's like usually not great. It's usually very like skewed. Mm. Like, so when you're like, I'm in a think tank, it's like, ooh. Like your band yikes. could be a think tank <laughs> for your TikTok. But you can have group oh, think. Christ. Group I'm think. Yes. <laughs> group think. <laughs> small communication. <laughs> It is. How about, wait, how about a stink tank? A stink it's tank just us. is. It's just us is in a small room, just farting. Yeah. Oh my god. It. Our band already basically is a think tank for like what we want to eat after practice. And yeah. Okay. Kinds of noodles. It's, Honestly, it's just, it's sometimes one of the hardest decisions you'll make. Yeah. You go fudge. Oh, yeah. You go ramen. How do you mm-hmm. choose? You know. Do you and know? That energy goes into the music, man. So we gotta eat something delicious. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> Do you think Taco Bell oh my God. is one of the greatest foods for <laughs> bands of all time? Definitely bands on tour. I haven't mm-hmm. had Taco Bell in maybe 20 years. Jesus. How do you, how do you just, feel? I, know, I feel like I, I like burritos and I like tacos, and I often go to places that are not Taco Bell to get those foods. But I understand yeah. that they're very beloved by people. Who I feel like he has a really good clean digestion track is what it comes down not to. Not if he's in a stink tank. <laughs> Well, I I remember I was in a band and we went on a, a like a tour around the country like a million years ago and I was vegan at the time, or like vegetarian slash pretend that I'm vegan hoping that what I eat is vegan. And I remember vegan. that I remember that Taco Bell had just like bean rice burritos and you just eat that and it probably wasn't actually vegan but pretended it was. And then also um, the Subway veggie patty. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember you got that all the time in college. It was disgusting. It was like <laughs> yellow. And- God, it was so gross. And I'm yeah. like, ooh, this is good for the environment. <laughs> and you eat a foot long and you eat half of it then. And then you eat the soggy, like lukewarm other half, oh like for God. dinner. And then you drink Red Bull and vodka. And that's mm-hmm. what we did. On that <laughs> I'm being so healthy, and then Red Bull vodka. You're like, is all look there. at me! I'm better than all of you. I care what goes in my body. Yeah, <laughs> the vodka Red Bull right then afterwards. You're in college. Okay. And- <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll have a healthier know. tour this time around because we're all old farts. We'll just eat like yeah. Soylent for every meal. So- oh my god! <laughs> I that that shit trips me out. Like my sister in law drinks Soylent. She like really sister in law. She actually likes it and drinks it. And she's like, I wouldn't have it for every meal, but she's totally fine. Just like, you know, there's a lot of people who are like very busy and sort of frazzled, and they always forget to eat. I'm mm-hmm. not someone who's ever forgotten to eat in my entire life, but she's like you. one of these people who forgets to eat. And so Soylent's great for her. She's like, oh, I need calories because I'm gonna die because I didn't eat anything all day. So <laughs> we'll just eat some of my life. how about frozen yogurt? First of all, the frozen yogurt like shop or whatever, it, that whole concept freaks me out so much. Because you walk in there, it's this fucking like bright white neon like post dystopian like fucked up <laughs> world. And then you're and then you're like eating like some sort of like pseudo food out of a spout from the wall. It's just yogurt, out. though. And it's not and it's food. Yeah, it's it's just like fl- flavored from the yogurt, but then you can add fun toppings to it. Mango. I, like the, I do like the toppings. I do. What's yeah. your favorite yeah. topping? What do you go? 
I go sprinkles and M and M's and Oreos. Sprinkles Hell yeah. and Hell yeah. frozen yogurt. I will say, I always I'm a sprinkle man myself, and I sometimes try it with frozen <laughs> yogurt, <laughs> specifically frozen Greek yogurt. It doesn't work because there's something about the tang. It's a weird texture. The, yeah, yeah. There's something with the tanginess of the Greek yogurt. The sprinkles kind of don't work the way you think they will. So you got to go fruit. I usually get like a, a mango situation, maybe a strawberry. Mm. Mm-hmm. Usually gummy bears. Gummy bears. Bears. Where I'm coming from different uh, gummy bears are chewier than you it, They might be chewier in that context. So just for all the listeners out there, if you do get gummy bears at your Froyo shop, just be careful out there. <laughs> just be careful. Have the guy you know what? Cut them for you. <laughs> oh my god! Everybody, I want some melted gummy bears oh, drizzled on top, here, like it's hot fudge. <laughs> You know what? After this conversation about Froyo, I'm back in. I changed my life. <laughs> so happy. Oh wow! I'm, I'm great. <laughs> great. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Let's talk yeah. about your tour because you're going out on tour, uh, <laughs> and you're going to be playing these songs for people. Uh, do you do you know where you're going yet? Are you going around you know, everywhere? It'd be crazy if we were going on tour next month. Yeah, you just hop on. You're like, hey guys, just take us where we're going. <laughs> like, I feel like there's some people who are just like, I'm gonna show up and see what happens. Yeah, hell yeah, I love that. That's nice. Yeah. Just, we do know where we're going, so we're. It's funny because it's literally the absolute bare minimum amount of dates that qualifies it as a tour. Like, because <laughs> it's not two dates. Like, two dates is like, oh, we have a show out of town and then we have a show in town mm-hmm. because it's three dates total. It's before, so tour. it's a tour. tour. Uh, so we're starting in, it says D.C., but it's actually, it's a lie. It's the D.C. area. It's Silver Spring, Maryland, mm-hmm. uh, at a place called Stone Quarry Tavern or something. And then the next day is in Philly at a cider bar. Uh, and then we're in Brooklyn at a barbecue restaurant. We're just trying to hit up oh, wild go. and wacky different kinds of venues to play music at. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have gonna some delicious it. drinks and delicious food. We're yeah, gonna, we were going to play at an electric Twitter. bike store next. <laughs> Did we both make a joke at the exact same time and then we just canceled the each, canceled each other? Yeah. What was your joke? I said that we were about to play at Hooters, but then we... Oh, yeah, you said Hooters, oh I said an electric bike shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Listen, <laughs> but yeah, so this that is, could just be your thing now. That's it. Oh, yeah. Well, I think one, one interesting aspect of this tour is that it's our first tour ever. And so we're super excited to go to other cities. And it's also the first time that we've ever felt like people in other cities would want to come see us play. Yeah, people also. might actually be there to see us, which is going to be wild. <laughs> That's yeah. really the, uh, the, the, the changing factor there, huh? <laughs> yeah, and then... It's also it, just crazy yeah. to imagine there's a lot of the songs on this album that we've never actually played as a band because either, like... You know, there were a few songs that I like Little Ripper is the second last song on the album. We played it like maybe kind of at the beginning of recording just to like figure out the arrangement, like very sloppily. But our band has literally never played the song Little Ripper ever because I kind of, you know, wrote the music on a guitar in my living room. Trevor wrote the lyrics like in his laptop over lockdown. Like it's just it's wild to imagine that so much <laughs> of this music has never actually been played by a band in a room. Yeah, totally. It's been an interesting creative process. I mean, for all bands out there during the pandemic, I'm sure, because it's like not this. It's not the same kind of process where you're just like, all right, let's meet at the practice space like usual. You know, like especially when we practiced, it's like, are we comfortable taking our masks off in front of each other? Like, are we gonna die? Is this, is this worth <laughs> it at that? all? We're not playing it. There's no concerts at all. At least that's just fun. fun. For a while and then yeah but but yeah we we made it work so we we yeah like you said we made this album and we wrote pretty much like all of the instrumentals yeah, we got really like, lucky with timing whole band we wrote all of like basically all of the music except for the vocals and lyrics right up until the lockdown started and pandemic and then after that we, were we wrote the lyric mode for six months and and I just brought a microphone with me, basically traveling all over the country and just like for various. You like, traveled so much, so you recorded like the demo for Crossroading in California, recorded the hmm. the vocal demo for Thought Bubbles upstate. Like you were kind of all over the place. Yeah. So, and then Phil and I were like, I'm the primary lyric writer, but Phil, it's pretty collaborative, and and Phil edits all of the lyrics too meticulously. 
And then also Phil, uh, so this is actually our third album. And on this album, definitely the most lyrics that you've ever written just independently, sure. Phil. Um, and partly because some of the songs were very personal to your life experience. And so it like made sense, especially this one song called Same Blood. And then this other song called Homesick, where it was like so much about fa Phil's family that it just made sense for him to write it. And, um, those are some of my favorite songs, honestly. Yeah, and it's so. cool because even when I'm writing lyrics, because I'm not the singer of the band, I basically, I think it's like what Fall Out Boy probably does, where it's yeah. like, I'm writing lyrics with someone else's voice. Like, I would sing the sort of, like, very crude vocal demo of the thing that I'd written, and I'd be like, yeah, it doesn't sound very good. And then he'd say, I'd be like, yeah, that's what it's supposed to sound like. It's great. That's basically what <laughs> Pete Wentz said, is that he writes most of the lyrics, and he gets the Patrick Sums, he's like, sing this, and he's like, yeah, why are you doing this, but okay. <laughs> Well, honestly, we're like, I, I kind of lied before when I said we wrote a riff because we, we have a chorus right now. It's kind of like what we're at with like a new song. The and I was here. like, you know, playing it in the basement the other week and it sounded like not that good. And then Trevor just sent me like a two second thing because we were trying to figure out like a next part. And I was like, oh, that's like what it sounds like when the singer of the band sings the part. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> totally. like it brings it all together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like we, for, for a really long time, Back now we can say back in the old days, Tree River was basically just like a writing project with me and Phil. And then it was like we would basically write everything except for the drums. And then the like we had a drummer to basically just like finish the songs at that point. Like it was really just more about us composing these songs. And then it wasn't until the last the EP that we made called Garden, which is we made and released it before that, this album, so was our most recent release before these singles, it was like this new era where we were really, like the whole band was in the practice space and we were practicing and we were writing together. So I think that's why it has like a very different energy. It's like more like kind of tangible, real like rock songs, if that makes sense, rather than just like these little dreams that we like try and create into art. It was before um, that it was like very overly composed. Like we had a on our second album, we had like a few songs where they were just like so sort of elaborately constructed that like if any actual band tried to play it in a room, the universe would it like fold in on itself or something. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. possible. I think we kind of <laughs> stripped things back in terms of like the energy level and the straightforwardness, and I'm much happier now at this level. Well, yeah, can we? I think that's probably. We're connecting with it more, honestly, because it feels more, like, yeah, approachable, I think, because we wrote it like normal bands write songs, you know, um, so it definitely feels like a new era. So with that, you guys did a song, Crossroads, which features Max Bemis of Say Anything on there, which is pretty wild. And I'm glad that you guys didn't go the Kellen Quinn route, you know, as everybody else has been doing. Uh, you're switching it up. <laughs> Sleeping with Sirens guy. What yeah, you know? Oh, it's a lot of collabs with literally almost everyone. <laughs> Look, he's, he's been out there collabing, and his voice is good on a lot of stuff. And I like it a lot better than I like Sleeping with Sirens as, like, newer things. Uh, this is me trying to be political and not You're shade a band. Yeah, yeah, yes. he is. Yes. Yeah, he is. Look, Bird's definitely real. <laughs> Kellen Quinn did a fine job on a few songs. It would be funny if you were talking about Colin Quinn, former Weekend Update host, who was doing yes. <laughs> yeah. emo songs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> New York uh, persona, just bringing it to With this, like, very yeah. deadpan, like, monotone mm -hmm. vocal delivery. In, like, uh, the middle of the MGK song. And it's yeah. just, like... Definitely the worst yeah. weekend ever, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone's like longing for his his days at the desk. See, now I'm trying to be diplomatic about Colin Quinn. Like uh -oh. <laughs> Colin Quinn on weekend update, you know, he did the best that he could with what he was I don't know, I got nothing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, not the best. By far the best, Dennis Leary. Oh god. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding with that take. No. Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. Like, yeah, he's mm -hmm. just I yeah. think it's unanimous at this point. Yeah, that's very fair. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely underappreciated at the time, but all the mm -hmm. real heads knew what was going on. Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, Rest. so Max is on the song. Uh, he's great. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so you're saying you're glad that we don't do a lot of collabs or he doesn't do a, cl- a lot of collabs? No, I just thought it was interesting because I haven't seen Max Bemis's name as like a feature, like as frequently, nice. at least for a lot of things that I've seen and listened to over the last like handful of years. So I just think that's like cool, especially because yeah. he does a lot of his own projects aside from Say Anything now. He's also just like, Say Anything is our favorite, it's been my favorite band since 2004. And it's like, not even like their number one and number two is like neck and neck. Like they're my favorite band. And then there are other bands that I like, like they're my, <laughs> they're the band. And then I have some other bands that I like. Uh, yeah. So it was, it's, it's crazy. Cause we had, honestly, our kind of like number two as a band is probably this band Weatherbox. Mm-hmm. And somehow, because, well, not somehow, Trevor's like very good friends with Brian because they grew up together in San Diego. So Brian actually sang on the second album. And then like that felt like such a sort of pinch me dream come true moment that honestly, after we did that, I was like, I don't really know how this is going to happen, but somehow the universe is going to work out such that Max is going to sing on the third album. And we were both like, oh, it's like, I, I had no connection to the man. I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know who I was. So you were manifesting. Yeah, you manifested. Can say. <laughs> I, I manifested it and it yeah. happened and it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely like our hero, you could say. Like it's we're yeah, just so stoked. I can't believe that other people are gonna get to hear it. And That's hopefully... definitely the song I listen to the most, just because it's like I don't know, kinda sounds the most like a say anything song. <laughs> it's all over. It's wild. It's, it's true. Like if he was gonna be on... singing over chords that I play it, it's crazy. Yeah, if he was gonna be on any song, it became clear that it had to be this one because it basically. But this was also the first song that he heard. So I, when I was like sort of first messaging with him, I was like, "Oh, we actually wrote a song that reminds me of Say Anything like yesterday." And he's like, "You got to send it to me." And I sent it to him. And he's like, "Oh my god, it's great!" And then like when we were, he was originally gonna sing for like five seconds on that song, "Same Blood," and we were like still figuring out what he would sing and what the concept would be. And then it was just like, I think he's got to sing this part, but what's wild about the part that he actually sings on that album, on that song, that was a part from Trevor, if you remember, it's from half tree. So he's singing out a part that Trevor and I wrote over 10 years ago at this point. Like it was just well, you know, sometimes you write songs and then you don't end up using them, but you kind of strip it for parts later on. Yeah. We, we ended up stripping a lot of parts from this song half tree, which is like not a song anymore, unfortunately, because we've used it for so many other things. Uh, but <laughs> He sang this part that had different lyrics, and we just didn't really change the melody. And now that's on cross writing, and Max fucking Bemis sings it. It's wild. Yeah, it it is like surreal, honestly. Um, so super excited. It's like it for us, like kind of like what I was saying before about actually having like people listening to us for the first time. Like, I think that hopefully a lot of people who are Max Bemis fans are going to hear this song and then get into us that way, too. So we're not using him for fame, but hopefully it'll open up, you know. It's good. Get, get us to see it's also a little something. less glamorous, but on yeah. the second to last song on the album, Kevin Guy, who produced uh, this record and our previous EP, who was like basically just a member of our band and one of our best friends at this point. He was like not really interested in singing on it, but he wrote the part that he sings on Little Ripper. He wrote the melody for that. And I was like, you clearly have to sing this part. And it's he's like a phenomenal, like actual tech. Like Trevor is a very emotional, powerful singer. But Kevin is like a force from like a, you know, <laughs> like, Gates, like, band Gates, yeah, he's, in the band Gates. he's like an unbelievably powerful you know, musician and singer. So he sings this part that is probably like pretty different than I think a lot of the stuff he sings in Gates. It almost like his part sounds like something out of Thrice or something like that. Hmm. Uh, but it's it's yeah. just a very, very cool. I love that we got him to sing on this thing. Because again, he's just been such a huge part of our music making process for five years at this point. Yeah. You know? Totally. He's heard every single demo that we've made in the last five years. And and he, like, it's not just like we show up on the in the recording space and he's like, okay, let's go. It's like, he you know, he wrote many parts on this album he like tells me you think something stinks it's like he is in there in the trenches with us every step of the way hell yeah he also has a cameo on our music video that we finished um shooting recently where we won't give away too much but he just to say this much he plays the leader of a clown cult <laughs> so and uh, if you're wondering if he's the only member of the clown cult in the video, the answer is not by a long shot. No, oh. there's a lot of yeah. clowns in this video. I feel like for you to have a cult in a video or anything, you have to have a, a handful at least of members to say this gotta, is a yeah, cult. Yeah, it's true. We got yeah. members. You need at least another person. 
Yeah. <laughs> One other. Just... <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's just completely terrible. Terrible. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, Wait, can yeah. we expect that? Uh, yeah. I know you said before we hopped first, on. Yeah, so we're getting a first cut literally any minute, and then I think the video is coming out like I think a week after the album comes out, or a week or two. So it should probably be early mid April. Yeah, and it's kind of an interesting choice to put out a video for because it is course. definitely the most like punk hardcore song that doesn't really sound much like the rest of the album. So it, I think it's going to catch some people by surprise that we went with this one, but super excited with how that song came out. And the video is really cool. It's like a very dark little short story with a nasty little twist ending. I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how yeah. you should tease it to it everyone on like because everywhere. We shot a video in September for the song Thought Bubbles and we shot it at a pool and we were swimming and it was very sunny and beautiful. And we shot this on February 20th in the fucking mm -hmm. woods in the winter mm -hmm. and like we're all wearing coats oh, and everyone's just miserably cold mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. desolate. It's just, I think it's like a nice sort of demonstration of the uh, variety of flavors we're capable of. <laughs> on one day. Sometimes you suffer for your art. Sometimes you get to enjoy the sun and the warm weather. Sometimes you just have to show the contrast between everything. Now, mm -hmm. is that why you call yes. yourselves emo fan fiction? The reason I came up with that when I was like <laughs> redoing the Twitter profile in advance of like this sort of album campaign. And it's all fitting just because like so much of us doing all these songs that kind of have very, very different vibes from song to song is like, it's kind of just like cosplay. You know what I mean? Like we're just putting on the guise of like, I don't know, My Chemical Romance for two minutes and 10 seconds when we play like Little Ripper or like Say Anything for three minutes and 30 seconds or just like, you know, Weatherbox or Criteria or all these sort of bands that were like, super obsessed with and just want to have a little piece of that. Yeah. And then through our, you know, and then we interpret it in our own, our own way. And then there, like there does, I think there is like a through line in the vibe and the voice for right. all of these yeah, songs. Yeah. It doesn't just so, feel like a mixtape or it's not like a cover band. Like it's not like that's a doozy or anything, you know? Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe the listeners will know what that means, but uh uh Yeah, probably. Like honestly. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> but like at the same time, uh you know, I'll be diplomatic again. Be like, you know, look, we had our time together, we did our, our Brian's work. the diplomatic one between us. <laughs> yeah. On, on our one. podcast. And then like when it's just us together, I'm just like, dude, fuck everyone's feelings. Everyone is idiots and fuck them all and who gives a shit. And then now I'm like, but listen, you know, it's a person that I may disagree with. You know, my opponent thinks that, you know, this is the right thing for America. But I personally think we should go in this direction. And on yes. November 4th, it's your dis Oh, God. <sighs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just prepping. So uh, so is Tree River going to have their fans write Tree River fan fiction mm, at the end of the day from these music videos? Well, we get some fans. <laughs> we <laughs> You know what's crazy is that so in so we put out this single well, we put out the EP then we put out a couple singles and the most recent single that we put out which is called Journey Proud actually got some some traction on Spotify and I think that like by far the biggest increase in our listeners have happened in the last like literally month and we've been making music together for like ten years or something like that. So yeah, it turns out all you have to do is get on a Spotify algorithm and then everything yep. just works itself out, which is just yeah, we had like a, we had a boost in the like release radar or whatever. So a bunch of people heard it. And then I guess at least one of those people was a Spotify editor. And then they put us on a editorial playlist, which is like the equivalent of being on the radio, I guess nowadays, you know, it's like indie radio. And then through that, we, we, we got a couple more. We gotta albums. get Justin Bieber to retweet our new single. Mm. That's Justin that's Bieber the remix the the latest. I'm gonna uh, manifest Justin Bieber hearing. Yeah. God, God please. All right, we got Max Bemis on the third, on the fourth. Now, Justin now the Bieber. Bieber. There's nothing. I think if we do make another album, there's one person left, and it's Tom DeLonge. And I. <laughs> okay. I think it actually could yeah. happen if we wanted to. Write it about just, aliens and he'll, is, he'll uh, come. This is his company, Tom DeLonge's yeah, to the stars. <laughs> just want to just let you know that we're listening. 
Tom. Hey, any any besties of the pod who knows Tom DeLong, hit up Tree River. They'll Ooh. write a song it'll about happen. aliens. I think it'll happen. I'm gonna make it happen. Um, you're my you're my hero. Probably the only person that people have said that my voice kind of sounds like. And I don't know if that's totally true, but I take You're both from the exact same neighborhood, so... We are, out. yeah. He, live, he lives, like, five minutes from where my mom lives and where I grew oh up. Oh, my God. But how do you say you're just the voice inside my head? Oh, God. Voice inside my yed, of yes. course. Yed. <laughs> As everybody in New York does. <laughs> I think yeah, uh, my, earlier this year... Angels and Airwaves actually they released a new album and they had like uh, some video that they released from the new album and, and on the YouTube thing they had the list of the lyrics and some line of some song the lyric had my head in it and they wrote my head in the YouTube like transcription <laughs> of the lyrics. I'm like, they know what everyone Angels wants. They it's know very, what they want. Page. I love that. Very self-aware, okay. which is one thing that I love so much about him. Yeah, know? he's like self-aware. He's obviously like out there and knows that not everyone takes him seriously. And then he embraces that. And I love that so much. That's why one of the many reasons why I love Tom DeLong. Seriously, if anyone knows Tom DeLong, please. You don't need outside help. I'm going to manifest it. Yeah. Yeah. The universe has decided. Yeah, he's gonna go get a bunch of crystals at the crystal shop oh, somewhere yeah. in Brooklyn after I this, and be like, my "Zodiac," and it'll tell me. How to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been heard on both the angels and the airwaves. You know, if you <laughs> if you go on TikTok and you you could do like a manifestation TikTok and see if it happens. Do you think he's on TikTok? I know he uh, posts like very basic, TikTok. like neoliberal tweets. On <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. that. Uh, do you think yeah. that he thinks that birds are real? Oh, if aliens exist mm. oh hell yeah he, but he probably thinks that there's a lot of a lot of shit that we don't know about in the sky probably well, birds are drones i think right is that the oh yeah that's the other one is that birds are yeah. drones that's a lot of drones it's yeah it i just uh, <laughs> it just oh, makes me so I heard, oh, no. I heard a fact the other day that for every human being on the planet Earth, there are one billion insects. Mm. Isn't that a like crazy that one? Mm-hmm. That's a lot that, of insects. Actually. That's a lot of insects. One billion, one billion <laughs> insects for every person on Earth. And that's a lot of people we're talking about here. That must yeah. be one, 250, 300,000 people on Earth total. Yeah, minimum, at least. Min. Yeah. Well, yeah, on the flat Earth. <laughs> One the other week, so that's why I, I learned about bugs. <laughs> now here, now now here we go. I need to know what what is everybody's favorite conspiracy theory. No, we don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about drone birds, Brian. Um. <laughs> well, here's the way I feel about the simulation one, and it's it's not you know, <laughs> I don't really know that we're not in a simulation but the way i feel is that i actually it doesn't really matter because i still have to like do laundry you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like if i'm in a simulation okay then you're you're in the same simulation as me well how do i get out of it i can't so i might as well just live my life it's not a simulation you don't think it is how do you know that's something that someone in a simulation would say (laughs) because (laughs) it's like damn it i've been caught shit (laughs) because i think that I don't think it is either. I'm just playing devil's advocate for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your evidence though? There's no evidence that there is or isn't. So you just gotta. If Elon Musk it. is telling me that it's a simulation, then I know that it's not a simulation because I yeah, that, don't I trust that man. Like that. So yeah. You're trying to invalidate some. I don't know, man. Uh, do you think that if if it was a, a simulation, do you think that? Like, I think that there are certain aspects of the world that would not be ideal, and a simulation could theoretically do way better than what we have. And so the imperfection makes it, I think, unlikely. Yeah, but isn't that. that the theory is that this is one of, like, many, 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 many simulations? Like, thousands? If it, if it is a simulation, wait, if it is a simulation, then it means that some either people or some creature being has created the simulation, right? Yeah, like your grandkids and, basically. Like, listen, we are currently on, we are on a path towards technologically being able to create a simulation of our own in the future. So a simulation creator would not create a world in which creating a simulation would be possible because then the simulation would take over their simulation. And so that's not how simulations awesome. work, I don't think. I think it could be simulations not- all the way down. 
Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. Yeah. all the way down, like the turtles. Yeah, yeah. turtles yeah. all the way down. I mean, yeah, is that just like the same thing as like faith and like? At the end of the day, faith? is it particularly interesting to ruminate on? I think not really. It's like that's the that's the Jewish interpretation, which I love. Also, it's like <laughs> whatever. It's gonna who cares if it's not. Yeah, it wash the dishes. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's very uh, like rocking chair uh, theor- theory. Is just like, yeah, I'm I'm thinking a lot, but I'm not getting anywhere. Like, there's nothing yeah, happening. Really. Yeah, you, we're not any smarter than we were 45 seconds ago. Yeah, the simulation sucks. Like, make me smarter for acknowledging it, right? Make me smarter. Totally. Actually, I changed my mind. It is a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm out. I'm I'm back in on the simulation. You're all right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why, but I just, I, I feel it. If it is a simulation, fuck. We, like, the simulation creators, you can do much better, honestly. You like, had a nice simulation. I made fried rice this morning. It was great. Ooh. I actually just had it for breakfast and dinner, which I very rarely do in my life in general, but I did it today, and it was good fried rice. So I'm having a nice simulation today. What if manifesting you, is just own? getting the simulation to accommodate to do your job. interests. Well, okay, so it's interesting. My wife <laughs> sometimes has been known to get a little into like woo woo. I don't want to say self help because I know that there's better ways of describing it, but sure. things that are sort of would formerly have been called self help stuff. Uh, and we, she was playing this fucking crazy podcast a few weeks ago that was basically talking about like quantum physics and how it pertains to manifesting, where like Basically, when you get down to like the smallest unit of measurement below the electrons and the neutrons and the quarks, it's like all energy and everything is all basically the same energy when you get down to it. So like you saying like, I'm gonna get Max Bemis on this song is just like, that is, you know, an actual proactive way of making something happening because it's all just us swimming in a field of energy. I don't yeah, know. I've, I've, heard, I've heard that also. And then the idea that the reason why, like if people, they either wish for something and they want to manifest something. Most often the reason why it doesn't actually happen is because simultaneously they're doubting that it's possible. And so they're, they're canceling out their own manifestation because they don't fully believe in it or they have some kind of doubt. And so that's why you can't just like wish for things. What, what the you, science that we have to get that? the some people on this now dude yeah. 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 I'm sure they love to talk about I'm that. wondering <laughs> what the the Venn diagram of fans of emo music and people who studied quantum physics is I mean we, there's gonna at least be one there's gotta there's be a lot one. of people probably who work at a marketing think tanks so I don't know how many quantum physicists yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, how do I? Who wants to help us with TikTok? Who works at a marketing think tank? Hit us up. Dude, they're all yeah. playing math rock. It's, they're all playing it's, it's math like our, Yeah, they're, they're math rock has a lot more stuff. They're, 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 they're our cousins. Yeah. Math People who rock understand. Emo, there's, there's a. I feel like now, if you look up like guitar tutorials on YouTube, emo and math rock are just looped in. They're, they're interchangeable. They're, yeah, mm-hmm. they're interchangeable at this point. Which I think is pretty cool, but we're definitely not doing enough of guitarists to like math hard, <laughs> hard math rock. We can do like C plus math rock because we're just that's as good at guitar as we can. <laughs> okay, we're like passing grade math class math rock. Yeah, I don't know how to talk. I'm gonna work on it. Pre algebra, like pre algebra. I do think that like like we mentioned Mars Volta earlier, and I'm a, I'm a fan of Mars Volta, but it did get to a point where I'm just like. Dude, what what is this? This is quantum physics of music. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, at a certain point, we made kind of a decision. I was talking about this a little earlier, but after the second album, which felt like it sort of at points collapsed under the weight of its own ambition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that was kind of why things sort of felt like a sea change starting with Garden, because it was like, let's try to maybe instead of impress, maybe try to engage on like a mm-hmm. sort of energetic and emotional level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think as soon as we started doing that and being like, well, is this like a f- cool, fun, exciting song instead of like, yeah, but have we used that chord before? Things just got a lot better, you know? Yeah. Totally. Also, I think that we, we like just from a lyrical standpoint, like we used to write songs that were based on like some kind of idea and then the new songs were typically based on some kind of emotion or feeling. And I think that people connect with the emotion way more strongly than the idea. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, that that's why like our songs have like a, 
there's something that I think people are resonating with, and that's really cool. It's happening for the first time for us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very. Uh, I, I have so much trouble getting people who are instrumentalists to just like stop noodling. Like, stop dude, nobody noodling. nobody cares. Nobody cares how good you are at guitar if you're doing well, a 20 minute solo. Care, but like, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm totally, I don't necessarily care anymore. I totally <laughs> agree with you. I completely agree. I think at this point, like, like guitar, like tech, technical skills, ha- it's completely saturated in, you know, even in emo world. And so it's like, how are bands going to like differentiate themselves from now on, you know, like no disrespect to our beloved emo community. We love all these bands. It's like, but like, 10 years from now, like, what is emo going to sound like? Are we going to keep on noodling or is keep something on else? Noodling. Keep on noodling. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that said, I love a good noodle. You know? I love a good noodle. There's room for everything. We noodle from time to time, I will yeah. say. There's room for everything. There's room in all types of music for all types of influences. Uh, but I do think that you're always going to get more people to connect with you if you're speaking from emotion and you're doing some good choruses and uh meaningful lyrics a nice chorus that's really yeah i'm I'm all like i feel like the biggest change on the last album was like super hyper focused on vocal melodies like yeah we have you know some fun little noodlies and we got like cool parts and everything but the sort of guiding principle was like is this a good catchy exciting melody and that's Mm -hmm. like the entire place that we're operating from at this point. Like if, if we can't do something that feels new and compelling and like, just like heart grabbing, then I, I don't want to do it. Heart grabbing. (laughs) Heart grabbing. Yeah. I, I think, I think that makes sense. Like, like you said before, what did you say in, Engage rather than impress. Yeah, because mm-hmm. no one was impressed anyway, so you might as well try to <laughs> come from a place of authenticity, you know? Yeah. We also, like, we didn't really get any listeners for so long because we just were so bad at, like, marketing ourselves. And then also Phil and I both have always, like, had our own, like, separate kind of careers. So music was always kind of, like, a passion project but it wasn't necessarily like we're, our lives were not going to fall apart if our band didn't make it mm-hmm. or whatever so so it really wasn't until we like got a little bit of help from um from jamie coletta and no earbuds and then thankfully our our label big scary monsters who we love so much they're like literally the nicest people they sign off emails with these like British slangisms that we've never heard before. Like every it's so, just like a new I love, I've never heard. I love all of it. First of all, they say, Hey gang. Yeah. Like we're we're called gang, which I love. And then they say <laughs> they use the word ace. They're like, mm-hmm. oh it's gonna be so, And instead of saying definitely, they say defo. Defo, defo? yeah. Defo. Defo. They're so cool, man. I, I really hope that we get to go out to the UK and just like have a beer with them. Mm-hmm. Have a pint. I think they're going to be at our Brooklyn show. Oh. Oh, my God. That's going to be so fun. <laughs> You're going to have a barbecue <laughs> with them. Oh, yeah. It's a barbecue place. I guess we'll just eat barbecue that day. Hell I think yeah. we have free barbecue. Oh, it, so, it was so crazy. Like, when we had our first, like, meeting with the label, it, it's going to, this is going to sound like humble brag, but, like, they were just like, this is, like, we love this album so much. Like, the owner of the label, he said that he listened to it over and over again all day, and then he went to sleep, and then he woke up in the middle of the night and then listened to the album all the way through. <laughs> what? Damn. That's the kind of people you want on your side, I guess. Yeah. And we were like, we were like, oh, my God. Like, because we had never really had a serious conversation <laughs> with any label before, you know? So we were just like, it, it felt surreal, honestly. It was really, really ace. It was super ace. It was defo ace. It was defo ace. Start adopting the slang right now. You gotta bring it in. I mean, they're so cool. British people are so cool. <laughs> it's very, uh, first of all, I think everybody should humble brag when they have successes in any capacity. So 
It's not hum- no need to humble brag. Just brag. Be like, no, nah, fucking killing wow. it. I got humble British brag. people listening to my nice music. Opinion. That's my nice humble brag. There we go. <laughs> what is that saying? That's my signature. Oh. Um, yeah, it's 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 really surreal. Thank you to Jamie Collette. She's the best. She's the nicest, probably the nicest person I think I've ever met. Yeah, even if we had nothing to do with her musically, I feel like she's just a very <laughs> nice, genuine, wonderful person who I would like to continue knowing. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all positive positive vibes here in Tree River Camp. We're it's one thing about like playing music and then just like having been unsuccessful for so long. Like we were just like humble and kind of it was always hard to believe that like anyone was actually like paying any attention, let alone like wanting to be part of it and help. So super cool. We're stoked. I hate that we told uh, Big Scary Monsters to stop listening to everything that was being said that was like... Oh, yes. <laughs> right before we said all the nice yeah. things. And then it's like... We were like, leak it. And then we're like... Ooh. Yeah, they are like, oh, we better not listen. But then it's like all these compliments, all these nice words, and they're They'll like, just have oh, to I didn't listen hear that. Back. <laughs> just play it in reverse, and then all the nice shit will be at the beginning. Yeah. And then they stop listening. You know what I mean? It's perfect. Probably. Yeah. You should just bleep it out. Just bleep out like, like a 30-second long bleep. Over that the compliments. Just take out the compliments. Just leave it yeah, all together. Like, what you say? Don't nice worry about it. Sending, of saying, yeah. and then we'll just send it to them as like a little email attachment, and then that's the best of all worlds. Be like, you yeah. guys listen to the podcast. Here's all the stuff about you. We didn't say anything else that we didn't want Nothing you to hear. Nothing else. You don't need to worry about it, guys. We made sure, sure it's fine. Me explicitly to not leak the record to anyone who asks on Twitter and many people who don't ask. So in that sense, I'm not violating That's it. actually very it's fair. Just, yeah. That was you never told me not to. We haven't really, it's not like we've been interacting with a million people on Twitter. Yeah, it's like three <laughs> guys who are like, I like this yeah. song. And I'm like, all right, here's the album. Yeah, like, here you go, bestie. I'm gonna just I mean, that's how, the, that's how you build bio. forever like fans. The actual link. Totally. I think that that's how, at least it's, that's how we've had to do it, is just try and go one, one by one. Totally. Yeah what we're doing and so far it's not that it's work but it's definitely working on a one by one basis which is fine it's better than <laughs> zero by zero you know exactly by the way can i just do one quick little plug if, if anyone's listening please. and you follow just go on spotify look us up and hit follow please it helps us out a lot the label is like say it helps. Really, they, they were like for the algorithm you should really tell people to follow we are so all in service of the algorithm smash, smash the follow and and help us out we appreciate that is the simulation just all of these websites algorithms? Oh my god! I mean, I, maybe I don't know. I just don't think that we would have as much control as we do now. Like because the simulation, like there's, it's not like good enough or bad enough for it to have <laughs> a simulation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's like us. If you were to make a simulation. Why would it have all this bad shit? Or if you wanted shit to be bad, then why is all this great shit? You know what I'm saying? So it's I just think not. It's just a very well made simulation. It's got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Spice it up. You know? The dichotomy. Some some bad stuff. I don't know. See, I don't know about that. Why do you think a simulation would be all good or all bad? That's a very naive sentiment. Because like when when like a, like what is the purpose of the simulation? I mean, I guess if it's just like the Matrix, it's, it's just for fun. It's funsies. Energy. Yeah, it's, it's like have funsies. you ever played like Sims? T- like it, when you play Sims Two, it's for funsies. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're not in the Sims. <laughs> but how do you know, Brian? I don't have a diamond above my head, telling me what to do. Do I? Invisible diamond. Yeah. Am I wearing a tiara? telling me what to do. do you think that when we so we because we probably will be able to come up with some sort of like we're we're gonna like fuck everything up eventually probably right like humans are probably gonna destroy everything emo social so, <laughs> if that's true then so that probably means that the sim, the creators of the simulation are not humans right because no they say they're like descendants and they're just like this is their form of watching netflix Oh my god! It's like the it's like the Black Mirror episode where it's like choose your choose your own adventure. That's what Mm -hmm. they do for all of us. Right. It. 
I don't know. I feel like if if it was possible to create a simulation, then we would have done it in the future, and then that would then we would be that sim we would be the simulation creators. You know what I mean? Like, unless they're not human at all and they're aliens, which maybe is possible, and and like, and, you know. But it seems like simulation would be either created by humans and then like that's how we're able to have like a human experience or maybe i don't know i shouldn't have taken all those mushrooms right before this uh, <laughs> everything you is kicked off a twitch swirling around no. you just can't take them no. on twitch but you can take uh, them before twitching yeah I mean, they can't prove it. that's what they call it <laughs> i'm talking portobello baby oh hell yeah so, a vegan burger lifestyle. So you're tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so dank. I'm tripping. Let's out. Like, go up to like a police officer and be like, mm, "I'm eating mushrooms, baby bellas, can't arrest me." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're almost to an hour, so I want to give you a chance to throw out all the rest of the plugs. Obviously, go follow on Spotify. Uh, what else have they told you helps with the algorithm? Where else can people find you on the internet and support you? And uh, once the record comes out on April 1st, where can they find it and pick it up and support you guys monetarily? It's exclusively being sold at Tower Records, and it's not going to be streaming. No, it's, uh, it's at Warehouse Music. We have, that's a regional reference. No one gets it. I'm sorry to say. Is that blockbuster? <laughs> blockbuster music. There you oh go. My God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember blockbuster music. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, well, for, uh, one thing I was thinking about, like we're talking about this one by one. If you know about Tree River and you like it, just share it with one person. Just like send it to one other person and and see what they think. Well, that would well, be really helpful. That's wild. Just one person. Pay it forward. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's literally it. Just tell one person and see what happens. And then also, Tree River Music is our handle. So I'm on. Just, I'm the Twitter guy, and Trevor's the Instagram guy. So if you like Instagram, that. that's all him. And if you like Twitter, it's unfortunately me, where I spend way too much. That's time. how Brian and I do it yep. too. I'm all Instagram. <laughs> I fucking. I'm all Twitter. I wish that neither one of us had to do either, but I, they kind of. If you want to be our intern, then email. We gotta us. hire the think tank, man. We're yeah, gonna be think tank first. Hire the think tank, tank interns. Tank. Yeah. Do your ever music? I, is that, I had yeah. some of those internships. I will say, in college, I had some like very shady. Like, oh yeah. Working for like this like mysterious producer who would like disappear for weeks at a time and be like, I'm sorry, I couldn't send you the money that I said in the job posting. I got hit by a car and I was in the hospital for four weeks. Like just crazy, crazy, shady what ass dudes. Hell? I had oh one God. internship where I just like literally sat at a table with a 70 year old man all summer. There was no work for either of us to do. So we were just sitting there. It was really extreme. I think I, yeah, it was really dark. And then that, and then the owner of the company who was never there, like sold it fired the 70 year old guy it was it was crazy wow probably went to prison i don't know if no, he's very successful he's like a voice oh interesting yeah. Yeah. should have gone to prison <laughs> it would have been funny Somebody mean to the 70 year old guy <laughs> yeah i remember it was so sad the 70 year old guy was like i'm trying to save money so i sleep without air conditioning and it was like august oh, oh boy yeah it was really dark oh, sorry to my end dude. Wait, let's do something positive because that was really sad Story about. <laughs> it's funny, honestly. It's, yeah. What else can we plug? Can we plug anything else? Uh, got... Outlets into the wall. That's true. That's you can plug yeah. that. Yeah. You can plug butts. Those are right. the things you can plug. You can uh, get permission first or give yeah. permission first. Are you allowed to yes. do that on Twitch? Oh, don't allow no. That's the sure. Only I don't word. think so. I really don't think so. Can't plug a butt. Is it in the terms of uh, service? No. It is. Probably, it is blatant. probably. It's written out exclusively, like including, but not plugging. limited to uh, plugging butts. Yeah. What if you have like a silicone <laughs> replica of a butt, and you have a plug? Can you plug a replica of a butthole? Uh, it's like a, a butt simulation. Yeah, yeah but a, a simulation butt simulator, if you will. Uh, I believe okay. butt simulation is also written into the terms of service that there will yeah. be no. Uh, Comprehensive. The algorithm of simulating a butt is also not allowed. Well, you know <laughs> what? You can like an etch a sketch. Can you draw like? I mean, you could draw. Drawings? If it ends up looking like a butt, but you're like, it's not a butt, dude. Then well, that's yeah. Fine. If, if somebody reports you and they're a narc in the chat, then yeah. Hey, uh, chat narcs, please um, let it Go slide, away. please. 
This isn't being recorded, so don't worry about it. Yeah, this is a thumb going into a butt. Can you see it? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. That could don't that. Don't me, Twitch. Okay, that's literally just a mushroom sitting on top of I two know, hills. It looks like a mushroom. I don't know yeah. how to draw a butt plug. But it's on top of a couple of hills. It's not a butt. It's a platonic ideal of a butt plug and what it looks like. You know what I mean? Platonic like, ideal. Yeah. Let me Google it. Hold on. You're going to you check, out, check out Phil's side project, butt plug. Yeah. Butt plug. Pretty sure yeah. that's a really good. Uh, you know what I'm going to plug? There's a really good episode of uh, BJ Novak made an anthology comedy ish series on Hulu called the premise that I think literally mm -hmm. no one in America watched. Uh, but the, I think it's the last episode of the season is called butt plug and it is awesome. It's great. It's about a butt plug. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's really just, there's never another piece of content that needs to be made about a butt plug after this. Mm -hmm. it's really okay. spectacular. It's all encompassing 10 years from now, there'll be the gritty remake of butt plug and then yeah. we'll have that. That's great. Check it out. <laughs> Uh, well, all right. That is uh, our episode. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll throw this over to Twitch. But if you're listening, uh, the record comes out on April 1st. So you better go listen to it and support Tree River. If you listen to it, share it with one other person. Only one. I mean, it's not a pure if you want to. It's fine. Yeah, but it's not a pyramid people. scheme. Like we're building up just like a one well, person music marketing think tank is my new business. Yeah. <laughs> Which is and that'll be the name of it. And you're gonna be like, nah, guys, it's not an MLM or regular think tank. This is like a legit business. No, no, no. You're only giving it to one person. You can't build a, a pyramid on one person. That's just a pole. That's just a tower. But if that if that person really likes it, tell them to give it to one person. Yeah. And then and then let's just and then both of those people are under you, right? And then yes. you pay up to someone else. It's really more of like a triangle. Like there's no right. there's no filling in the middle That's there. What it's a just a, I think it's like a free form shape where sometimes you yeah. have turtles. The guy. Turtles all the way down. Yeah. Honestly. It's it's multi level vibes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We'll do a little vibing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, go check out the record say. time being. It comes out on April 1st from Big Scary Monsters and go follow Tree River and everything. Uh, buy it at Tower Records. Buy it at Tower Records. Support your local Tower Records if it still exists. It's only on uh, the desk. Trevor, Phil, this is awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on. Thank you so much for having us and talking some shit with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk shit on a Sunday night anytime, baby. Hell yeah.